This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, a friend asked me today um, a very strong and very powerful question. Um, we're finding ourselves standing in front of very hard situations, very hard questions that are shaking the, um, the foundations of our faith many times in life. And today, this friend asked me, he heard my class yesterday, and yesterday in class, I was talking about the fact that people are not willing to sacrifice so much and to do as much as they should and they rather to find quick solutions and fast um, um, answers to their problems even in the cost that really they won't be answered like for an example a person got a real problem um, in his life he doesn't have um, like He's not happy. So really to go to the depths of his problem and to fix himself in the roots, in the beginning of the problems, to uproot the source of, of the problem. And by that in the end to be happy is too hard for the person. He's not willing to do that. He's not willing to dive into the swamps of despair and to find the reason why the water are stuck over there. How can he take out the, the, the stone that is, is, is blocking the, the water from, from running, from cleaning themselves? And, and, and he's too scared to get into the filth of his own emotional sorrow. And he doesn't want to be happy. And he doesn't want to be sad, so what will he do? He will plaster, he will cover that, that sadness with something else, and he will pretend to be happy, even in a cost of, of not being happy, finally. So, even the goal that the person wants, or at least claims that he wants, is not important enough um, for him to work hard to achieve it. And... I was referring to people that find themselves um, in, a, in a certain lifestyle, um, orthodox lifestyle, religious lifestyle, and thinking to themselves or letting themselves fall in that dream, in that trap that if they will be religious, so their problems will be solved. If they will pray in the mornings, if they will uh, go and learn Torah, if they will do this, if they will do that. And they are just wherever you feel comfortable. I, for me, it's 100%. Any rejection, someone had problems. So, in. Um, in reality, people are choosing to become more religious and more strict and to do more. And they don't see the salvation comes. And they're choosing to stick to that method, to that behavior, to that way of life. Even if it doesn't bring the, their desire, their happiness that they were hoping for. Like for an example, many people that are hoping... Uh, to be rich, to be wealthy, to be able to pay their bills or whatever. They're receiving certain advice that are connected to religion. Like, you should give more charity, you should give your miser money, give 10% of your income to charity. You should do this, you should do that, you should guard your eyes, you should say tikkun aklali, you should like, whatever, you learn Torah, you keep Shabbat. And many advice, in the end of the day, those people are trying to keep those advice, those obligations, those mitzvot, and money doesn't come. Like many people are religious and keeping all rules that they can, and money they don't have. So the person is choosing 
not to go deeper and to find the real reason why he's poor, why he's unhappy, why he's sad, why he's terrified from people, why he's afraid to express his emotions, why he cannot say to his wife, I love you, thank you, I appreciate your kindness, oh you're so nice, or whatever. He's holding back his emotions, he cannot hug his children, he's got issues with his own babies, like what's going on with you, what's your problem? He doesn't want to check. And he rather to stay in that gray kind of life that he doesn't feel so much and he never experienced true happiness and he doesn't have peace in his house. And he's plastering it all with those answers, but I am observant, but I am religious, I am very orthodox, I am very strict, I'm keeping, I'm observant, whatever, from, from, all, 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 all methods, all ways of, 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 of making up stories for you not to work hard and not to confront your fears and your sorrow and your pain that you're so terrified from. So now the problem is that why that people won't go and search for the truth, why their own lives are not important enough for them, for us, that we will do whatever is needed for us to do for that goal that our life will be better or the life of our children. So my friend asked me that question about the class yesterday. Why, if people are trying to do things for Hashem, people are waking up earlier in the morning for Hashem, at least they're claiming that they're doing it for Hashem. People are trying to um, learn more Torah, trying to guard their eyes, trying to go to the mikveh, trying to be more observant, to keep more Torah, to, to fulfill their obligations from that side. And why the salvation is not coming? You see, in our generation, you have thousands and thousands of people that on daily basis, sitting and learning Torah, and we're printing thousands of books and selling them, and people are learning, and many more Baal Tshuva, and putting more tefillin every day, like, like so many times more than 70 years ago. Like the numbers are, are incredible. And still, where is Mashiach? We're waiting for redemption. Can we sense the... We can sense the Mashiach, or at least to imagine, to hope that we're sensing Mashiach, only from the side of the troubles, only from the side of the craziness and darkness that is rolling in the streets, not from the side of, oh, look, I'm really sensing some big miracles happening all over the place. Oh, I really see thousands of my prayers already been answered. I, the, salva the, the colorful and beautiful and pleasant and joyful salvation it's not the salvation that we smell yet. That's not what that we feel that is coming and that's why we're saying, oh, Mashiach is probably here. Because that we see, or at least we think, that things cannot go worse, that's why we say, okay, so Mashiach is for sure here. But the truth is that it's not true. You can never know, like, it can be much worse. Like, you don't know what really can happen. Like, Hashem has got a fantastic sense of humor. Like, Hashem... He is very talented, like he knows whatever, like he, he's able to make things very weird, like he doesn't have a problem. Hashem, you're talking about the creator of the world, like Hollywood, all those movies, it's not movies, it's, it's nonsense. It's compared to the, the real holy imagination of the creator, like you know what Hashem can make, you know what Hashem can do, like... People are afraid from aliens, from World War Three. Like, okay, tiny, for small things. Like Hashem, Hash, Hash, the Creator. You know what the Creator can do if He wants. We don't know. That's not a sign. Bad things, decrees, pain, sorrow is not a sign. It's not a real sign. So that friend asked me, how can it be that people are sacrificing, that people are doing, that people are working, and they don't see salvation? So I told him, look. The Creator, even though that He obligated us with the Bible, by giving us the Bible and all the commandments, even though that He obligated us to keep the Torah and Mitzvot, He's expecting from us to do a little bit more. And that more is not a hidden wisdom 
that we need to figure out. It's not a secret code that we need to break our heads to find or, or, to, or to understand. This is the basic that we lost. This is the simplicity of life that we lost. This is exactly the rebuke and the way that the Creator is explaining and expressing His sorrow in days of destruction, in the days that we lost the Temple, First Temple, Second Temple, all the sins that have been described and written and, uh, in the Bible or in the bo books that have been written by our ancestors and the righteous ones, expressing and explaining the sorrow of the Creator from the fact that we lost the basics, the faith, the love, the friendship, the loyalty, the honor, the respect, the generosity, all good attributes, the good manners, the behavior, the shape of our faces, the smile on our faces, this is exactly what we lost and this is exactly what that is needed from us to bring back to this game that calls life. Because without it, it's not life, even if you are observant, even if you are from, from birth, religious from birth, even if you are keeping all what that seems to be Torah or mitzvot, you wake up in the morning, you pray in a synagogue, you put filin, a woman, cover their head, wearing long sleeves, long dresses, what, okay, great, even if you do all of that, the main part of the book is missing. What is that main part? Is the soul, it's the intention, it's your heart, it's missing. And when it's missing, so it's like a body without a soul. It's like a book that, like, with no letters, it's like it's an empty box. It looks like a fantastic box, oh, just came from Amazon, a huge empty box. Like you're opening it, you have only disappointment inside of it. Why? It's empty. It's empty. It doesn't contain, it doesn't hold spirit. Now, what is that spirit? It's the spirit of Hashem. That's the spirit that the Creator blood inside of us, that He gave us, and that's the color of our soul. The unique light that you hold inside of you, that these are the, those are the colors of your soul, the shades of your soul, of your spirit, and they are different, and they are unique than mine, different than mine. They're unique and they belongs only to you and only you can figure out what they are, what you hold because they're inner. They are your treasures. They are the way that you listen to music. They are the thoughts that you think while reading that verse. It's your mind. It's the feelings. It's your heart. It's not the way that you act. It's not your behavior. It's not the way that you walk or talk or say or pronounce. It's your intention, it's the meaning, it's the thought, it's your spirit, it's your, it's, your, it's your soul. Now, when you are not connected to who you are, or you are disconnecting yourself from who you are because you're too scared to express yourself, so you can never bring the right result. Now, for the answer to that friend of mine that asked why we're doing so much and we're not being answered. So the answer is that it's because that we have an amazing device, amazing machine, but we're not plugging it to the, to the wall, to the electricity. There's no power. What is the power? The power is the spirit. It's the spirit of life. That's the energy. And you need to channel that energy into your work, into your actions, into your acts, into your movements, into your talks. You must channel the light of your soul to bring the result that is needed, that is required. Now, why people are not willing to sacrifice, why people are not allowing themselves to go and to confront all of those obstacles, all of those walls of separation that are blocking them from finding who they are, because that people are so terrified and so scared to work and to fight for truth, they rather to stay in those lies. They rather to stay in those hidden places, that in those hidden places they won't enjoy and they won't feel no satisfaction. Why is it happening? 
Why people are choosing sadness and despair and anger on true happiness, on joy and on satisfaction. Because people for many, many years been humiliated and their self-esteem been destroyed. And it's very hard for us to believe that we can grow, that we are worthy, that we can succeed, that there are good things that are waiting for us. For an example, you can see in Shiduchim, people that wants to get married. And they're getting to the age of 30, they're chas shalom, getting to the age of 35. In that moment, people around them, the communities, are already feeding them with the despair of there is no chance in the world that you'll have children. There is no way in the world that you'll find that one that you were looking for. And on and on and on. And then people are dropping their dream and start looking like crazy for a match for someone to take them. And they're finally getting into a house with a person that they don't like. That they don't feel connected to. And it's only coming because that they are terrified from not getting married. So the fear becomes to be their engine to look for a soulmate. And they're not looking for a soulmate. They're looking for the way to block the fear from exploding again. They stop looking for their soulmate. They're looking for drug. They're looking for something to, 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 to shut off the pain. That no one will remind them that they're a failure, that they will have a house, that they will have children. And those people are choosing medium life, life of, of compromising, life with no happiness, only because they let fear push them to act. Now, not only in Shiduchim, not only in finding your, 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 your partner to life. It's also in going and opening a business, to finding a profession for life. It's also on sitting and learning Torah from the wrong reasons. A person can decide, okay, you know what, I'm going to learn Torah. Wonderful thing. I learn Torah every day. I learned a lot of Torah in my life. But still, many years and many times in my life, when I went to learn Torah, it was from the wrong reasons. But the Torah is warning us. Hashem is saying to us, listen and be careful. There are two ways to learn Torah. If a person purified himself enough, so when he will go and learn Torah, so then the Torah will be a potion, a cure for him. It will give him life. It will be a potion of life. But if the person had not purified himself enough, so the Torah can become a lethal poison that might kill him. So now, when you go from the wrong reasons to learn Torah, the Torah might be dangerous for you. How can it be? The Torah is so great, so amazing. Also a knife is amazing. And you can, um, you, you, you can save the life of a person by making a surgery in the right place and cutting in the right time and knowing what you do. And you can use the same knife just to stab people and killing innocent people in the street. Same wonderful knife can act for both sides. Electricity, it's a wonderful thing. You know how, how much pleasure and joy and, and good things we can enjoy from electricity today? Because we learned how to channel it in the right way. But if you don't know how to channel it properly, people are dying from it. Thousands of people, millions of people can die from electricity. The same wonderful gift that's been given to you can be too strong for you. And there are examples in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Mishnah, in the Gemara that are showing to you that there are proper ways for learning. And there are ways that if you will learn under that way, you will find the opposite from what that you're supposed to seek for. You will be destroyed by that. How can it be? A person is going and learning Torah, and when he comes home after learning and, and, and expanding his knowledge, what that he's doing with all that knowledge is rebuking and criticizing and thinking negative way, thoughts on people that are around him, his wife, his children, his community, his people, his neighbors, his parents, whatever. Why? Because he learned that they're all wrong and he's right. 
something is wrong with him. But he cannot recognize it. Why he cannot recognize it? Because he was learning from the wrong reasons. And the poison that poisoned his mind is now blocking his eyes from seeing the truth. And everything that he sees with his eyes is twisted now. He cannot recognize the truth. Because he chose lie when he started his journey. He chose to lie to himself and to go and learn from the wrong reason. To his wife, he said, no, you don't know the importance of Torah. I'm going to learn the importance of prayer in the Minyan. I must go pray in the synagogue, whatever. But the real reason why he went was because he didn't want to take the children to the kindergarten and to dress them and to feed them and to wash and to clean and to change diapers. And the real reason why he, did, why he had to go and pray in a minyan for Mincha and for Mayriv in the noon and in the night was because he didn't want to wash them and to fix dinner and to take them to bed and to say Kiyachma with them. He rather to put all that burden on his wife she needs to do all the housekeeping, right? No, not, not right. Not right. Doesn't written any place. It's not the truth. And if it's written somewhere, so we need to put those books aside and to look for the real will of the Creator. Because something is wrong with that method. Because if you're not honest, if you're not an open person, if you're not a kind person, you are not with Hashem in the same side. Even if your rabbis taught you, so maybe you need to inspect and check your rabbis. Because in this generation, the darkness is very, very heavy, very, very thick. It's very, very hard to see. And you have a responsibility for your family. You have a responsibility for your children. You have a responsibility for life. And you will be judged on your actions. And you need to be responsible on everything you do in life to bring the right results. Now people are choosing to compromise on things that are not bringing them to what they desire, to live a happy life. And the reason that they are failing is because that they are not appreciating themselves enough. It's because that they are not going with that mindset, I am a child of the Creator and I deserve good and I can do good and the good belongs to me, and I belong to the good. And people heard negative things about themselves that are basically, are only lashonara, bad words, bad tongue, bad things about themselves, and they bought that. They fell in that trap of the evil inclination that destroyed their self-esteem, and now they're going with that sadness, with that despair, with that low self-esteem, and they imagine to themselves that they are really low-life creatures that don't deserve good. And with that approach and with that attitude, you cannot succeed. Why? Because even if you see gold, even if you see a diamond, you feel, I don't deserve it. I can't have it. No, it's not mine. Probably someone else. You won't go and seek for your diamonds. You will fall to sadness and despair and you won't reach your destiny. And you will not express the diamonds and the treasures that the Creator treasured inside of you. Even if you will pretend to be religious and to be observant and keeping all Torah and mitzvot. You're just pretending because in reality you are commanded by the Creator to be a human being, to be a believer. Abraham was the head of the believers and he started his life as a non-Jew. He started his life in a foreign land, in a foreign family. His father was a black magician. His mother was not in the zone of purity and Kedusha. They were doing horrible things. They were under the kingship of Nimrod that was an evil king. People were basically impure in their area. But those, that couple, those people, Abram and Sarah, something in their heart was feeling that something is wrong. That they deserve good. That there is a different source to life. That the energy that is channeling life to the creation is coming from a good source. And they investigated. And they went deeper and deeper with that investigation until they found the Creator. And they called him and they screamed to him. And Abraham was standing and screaming from the darkness. 
from the dark side from the black dark part of the world from places that you feel that you cannot call Hashem from those places why because you don't appreciate yourself you don't recognize the light of your soul you don't understand that the Creator doesn't have anything else except of you in his world like the Gemara is saying that the Creator is saying, Malo le'av shehegla et banav. The father that exiled his children, he doesn't have anything in his world anymore. You just kicked your son out of the house. Now, can you satisfy yourself with a good book, with a good movie, with a good meal? Your kid is outside in the streets. When you're normal, when you're sane, you cannot eat and you cannot see and you cannot read, you cannot focus. Your child is out there. Your mind is out there. Your heart is out there. I gave that example many times and I'll repeat it. A family is in the house. They send their children to play in the park. Ten children, blessed family, nine of them came back from the park, 8 p.m. All the nine, nine out of ten, came with wonderful stories. The mother, she's smiling to everyone, hugging everyone, counting and checking. Okay, Yosef came. Okay, Nachman came. Okay, Shlomo came. Okay, Or Avraham came. Everyone came. Hey, where is Israel? One is missing. Where is he? Where is one of the children? He's not here. But the kids are coming. And they're coming with stories. Mother, you can't believe it. When I was in the slide, when I was in the park, when I was running, you don't know. And kids are coming and telling stories. Mother, listen. I memorized my Mishnayot by heart. And I read the Tehillim. And I was doing this. And I met Rivki. And I met Vega. And I met Sarah. Everyone are coming with their stories. Can the mother hear the stories? No. Why? She's still bothered. Where is Israel? No, no, no stories now. I'm willing to hear your stories. I want to hear that you finished Shas. I want to hear that you've been in Uman. I want to hear that you light your candles two hours before of Shabbos. I want to hear your stories. I'm willing to. But I can't. One of my children is in the darkness. It's 8 p.m. Crazy people and pedophiles are walking in the streets. You can't leave your kids outside. That's the situation that Hashem is stuck at right now. Now you think that you're in the darkness. But the truth is that Hashem is with you out there right now. He's looking for you in the streets like crazy. His mind is not saddled. His spirit is not with him. His heart is going out to you. He's with you in your pain, in your struggles, in your sorrow. So now you're asking the hardest question of them all. So why in the world is not bringing Mashiach? Why is not finishing this story? Why is not bringing complete redemption? It's in his power. I know why I cannot find my child because I'm looking for him and I have only two eyes, I have only two legs, only two hands. I cannot drive in all the streets in the same time and look for him. I cannot. I'm limited. I'm a person. I'm a human being. I'm physical. But Hashem, He doesn't have those limitations. He's supposed to redeem us all in one second. Just handpick us all from the dark side. Bring us to the light. Finish the story, Hashem. Why aren't you bringing redemption? Let's finish the class here, please. It will be the, the best ending in the world. Maybe redemption will come. No, it won't come like that. It won't come like that. Why? Why? Why can't Hashem do that favor for us? Because if Hashem, I'm telling you, that's the answer. If Hashem will redeem us, it wasn't a redemption. If we won't bring the redemption on our own together, we will do it as brothers, as family, as a community. It doesn't worth it. There's no reason in all the creation 
From the first day of creation until today, if in the end Hashem will bring the redemption. It's, it's not a story to tell. It's nothing, it's a joke. You destroyed us for 6,000 years and then you chose to save us. Okay, thank you. That's an abusive father. If that was the ending of this story that he is redeeming us in the end, so why to create the world? Why to destroy us for 6,000 years? Why to do that? Why to kill us so badly for so many generations in such weird ways? If not that we need to break our nature, that we need to change our ways, that we need to become human again, that we need to express the spirit of Hashem that is hidden inside of us and to be godly people, to be shiny, happy people that are walking in the streets and welcoming everyone in peace. Now you don't appreciate yourself and you think that people will make fun on, on your way of smiling and that people will criticize you so you're afraid to smile and you're afraid to talk and you're afraid to stand like a crazy meshuga like I'm doing and to speak in front of people because you're terrified to express the godliness that is treasured inside of you. But this is why that you are suffering. Because you're not expressing the inner flame of fire that is burning you from inside. And you are burning from inside. And with the years you're losing your power because you're being burned. But if you will channel that fire in the right direction, which direction? Torah, Tfilah, no! What that Hashem wants from you? You know what Hashem wants from you. You have a problematic wife that needs you to sit with her for two and a half hours. Every day talk about nonsense. That's the place you need to channel the light of Hashem through patience, through breathing, through thinking, through working on your attributes. And that's the way that you will express the godliness that is stuck inside of you. You have a problematic child that cannot listen to you, that wants to break the house, that wants to tear the furniture to pieces, that wants to paint on all the walls, and he already painted half of the ceilings in the house, and you don't know what to do. Oh, I'll tell you what to do. You will find the way to channel the light of your soul to that child. Your wife, she wants you to buy a house. Your husband, he wants you to go to the park. Your children, they want to go to the beach. They want to learn Torah. You want to teach them Torah. Whatever Hashem put in His wisdom, in His amazing supervision around you, that's your reality. Into that reality, you need to channel the inner light of Hashem that is coming from above, outside to your surroundings, and heal the world from your place, from the point of center of your being. Wash and water the world with the light of faith, of kindness, of happiness, of patience, of respect, all good manners, all good behaviors that are needed and required in your area, to your surroundings. You cannot be like me. You know why? Because you, as who you are, won't stand in my tests ever. You don't have a chance to hold on in my tests. But you know what? I don't have a chance to stand in your tests as well. No chance! You can think that I'm a hero. Oh, he's so strong. Trust me, I tell you the truth. In your tests, I wouldn't stand. I wouldn't survive. I would not hold on and survive and stay sane and happy as you are in your condition, in your place. Even if you're a broken, cracked vessel that doesn't have almost a shape, that's how you feel about yourself. You don't know how I feel about myself. Maybe I feel even worse than you. The fact that you survived until today, the fact that you have not shortened your life, the fact that you are still waking up in the mornings, the fact that you decided to put filin, to keep Shabbat, to eat kasher, to go and be friendly with that person, to express your emotions in that situation, to confront your fears in that time, those 
are the evidence that you are a hero. Your weaknesses and your defaults are not the evidence for, evident for the fact that you are lousy, that you're worthless. They are the evidence for an exile that is taking place in our reality. And in a war, in a filthy place, you're getting dirty. You're getting wounded. Your wounds, your pains, your loss, your scars, all your pain that you feel and experience emotionally and physically are the results of the exile, are the results of the darkness that is hitting us on daily basis. It's not our fault. We need to fight with it. We need to confront it and not to be scared. A person that really from inside he has confidence, real bitachon, confidence in Hashem, it's a person that knows that even if he is falling, Hashem will be there with him. Not only when he is righteous, not only when he is up, Hashem is with him. Like that King David said, even if I will go to the lowest place in hell, to the sheets of hell, to the lowest place in hell, I won't be scared because you are over there with me. Even if I'll walk in the valley of death, being attacked by the shadows of darkness, not be scared at all because I know you're there with me. What are those dark places that he's talking about? Frightening shadows, valley of death. What are those places? Those are your failures. Those are your downs. Those are the moments of your despair, of your anxieties, of your panic attacks, of your crazy angers. Those are the moments that you feel in complete darkness, being controlled by lust and desires, being attacked from all directions, being betrayed by your beloved ones, solitary and alone and closed and, and blocked and sealed and, 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 and filth. And in that moment, a person with confidence means a person that is connected to reality, to the truth that Hashem is with you, won't be scared even while falling, even while failing, even while disappointing himself. Because on all of our lackings, on all of our problems, there is a magnificent, most beautiful solution of them all. And it's called tshuva. To come back to Hashem. Hashem said, you can come back to me. Come back. Hashem gave you the recipe for the success of your life. Come back. From every place. From every darkness, from the lowest places of them all, you can always come back. You don't need to complete the distance. You don't need to climb the highest mountains. The Torah is not behind the large sea, behind the ocean, not after those huge mountains of darkness. It's not in the sky. It's not in heaven. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep, to do. It's inside of you. This is why we're praying and not being answered. This is why we're learning and not being answered. This is why we're trying to be observant and we're not being answered. Because the main part is missing. You have not plugged yourself to the power, source of power. Source of power is from within. What is your source of power? How are you charging yourself? Your iPhone, you're charging it to the wall. You're plugging it. It, does, it has an, a, an outside way of, of charging it. It cannot be charged from within. You cannot feed it from inside. But you are not alive from within. You're al from outside. You're alive from within. You're alive from an inner source of life that is giving you life from within. It's the light of your soul. You're going to say, no, if I'm not going to eat, if I'm not going to drink. But the Torah contradicts you. Because the Torah is saying, 
The person is not alive based only on bread and water. When Moses went up on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, he was not eating no bread and not drinking no water. And he did it three times. 120 days he didn't eat and didn't drink. Elijah the prophet was running for 40 days straight. Didn't stop. More than any marathon runner that you ever heard of. 40 days and 40 nights he was running in the desert until he reached Mount Sinai. And when he came to Mount Sinai, the Creator revealed himself to him in a prophecy in the middle of the night. 40 days and 40 nights he walked and ran in the desert based on one meal that he ate before. Can you live 40 days and 40 nights based on one meal? Your answer is no. It shows how stupid you are. You can. That's the answer. <laughs> you don't get it. You can. You just don't believe that you can. That's your problem. Yes, the answer is that you can. Moses was not different. Elijah was not different. Abram was not different. They were committed. That's the difference. They chose themselves. When Moses went to Mount Sinai, he just went. Go. Go to Mount Sinai. You will see wonders. Go for 40 days. I tell you, if you will go for 40 days and 40 nights, I promise to you, you will come back with stories. You won't die. You won't die. You won't die. If in your story you were supposed to die, you would die already. How many times you confront death? How many times people tried to kill you? How many car accidents were supposed to kill you? How many times you lost your mind? How many times you went all crazy? How many times you already found yourself about to die and you didn't? Why? Because you're meant to live. Your life are in the hand of the Creator. Your life is not in your hand. I had a friend that told me once, that he spoke with a friend before, a few years earlier, to that situation. And he, his friend told him, you have such luck that even if you will try to jump off a bridge, you will land on a truck that is taking mattresses. You'll jump on the mattresses. You won't die. Even if you'll jump from a bridge. And he said that after a few years, he decided to take his life. He decided to kill himself. And he checked online the best recipe for immediate death, all medi medications and all mixing, whatever. He investigated and checked it all and sealed the right recipe for immediate death. Took everything with him to the park while walking to the park to kill himself in that sunny day. He remembered that friend that told him, even if you'll jump from a bridge, you'll land on a truck of mattresses, you won't die. And he started laughing and look at the sky, start laughing at Hashem and the Creator. He told him, okay, show your power, show me your power. Let's see you stop me today. And he went to the park and he took all the drugs that were needed and he drank all the acids that they offered him in the Google whatever. And after a couple of hours he found himself in the hospital and been humiliated by all of his family and been destroyed by all of his friends and puked for several days and been hospitalized in, 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 in special department whatever and went crazy from this situation. But to kill himself, he was not able. He was not able. You're in the hands of Hashem. You're in the hands of the Creator. You think you can kill yourself. You think that you can set your destiny. You don't have a clue about what goes on in this world. You don't have no understanding yet who is running the world. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that it's a very hard thing not to have faith at all. But even those people that are trying all their lives to uproot themselves from source of faith and are working hard on not to believe in the moment that they're about to complete their desire and not to believe completely in the existence of the Creator, immediately they're dying and then they're facing the truth. They're being judged by Him. You cannot live 
without faith. The reason that you're alive is because that you have faith. The reason that you are alive is because that you have faith. And as much as you're going to increase your faith, you live more. You will enjoy life more. You will feel the satisfaction from life more. And more and more and more. And the beginning of faith is that you're going to believe in yourself. Because you're a handmaid of the Creator. And you cannot believe in Him if you don't believe in yourself. If you don't believe that you have a purpose, if you don't believe that you've been sent by the Creator to this world with a mission, so what's, what's the chaos? What's going on? What's the reason? What's the purpose? What's the use? You don't have faith. You should seek for the faith. And the faith is in the nights. The faith is within. That you will investigate who am I? And what am I doing here? And why those situations happen to me? And why those coincidences are keep on coming? And why like waves in the sea they're washing me and washing my face again and again? And why am I falling in the same places over and over? What's the real message? What's the real wisdom that is behind all of my life scene? When you will make that investigation in the most simple way of them all. Talk to yourself. Talk to the Creator. Talk to your soul. Talk to your friend. Talk to your teacher. Talk to whoever you feel comfortable talking to and express your thoughts and question and ask and doubt and hope and pray and yearn and seek and look until you'll find and don't drop that search until you will grab the salvation and the thing that you were looking and seeking for. And if you will give up one minute before, you gave up on yourself. You gave up on your soul that is precious. And you can never know which soul you carry. You can never know which precious soul the Creator treasured inside of you. You can never know which wonders you can deliver to the world. You don't know. You don't know the power of your prayer. You don't know the power of your intention. You don't know the power of your speech. We are creating new sky and new earth when we talk. Our thought has power to go and to change the world. When you're thinking about something you don't know. You're watching a video, you're talking with a friend, you're speaking to someone. You don't have a clue that your mind is wired in a hidden way to the wide world. And you're moving trucks and you're moving people. And you're making boats swim and, and, and cross the lakes and the seas. And you are delivering light and bounty to the world. When you're working on yourself, you're delivering redemption to the world. And when you're not working on yourself to express your godliness, you're blocking the godliness from the world. When you are letting your fears control your mind, so then you're delivering darkness and fears and destructions and sorrow and depression and despair to the world. And people are being abused and people are being raped. Now you're going to go and blame yourself on the sorrow. Instead of going and breaking yourself to pieces to be a positive person. For God's sake. For Hashem's joy. For Hashem's satisfaction. Redemption depends in you and me. In us. As one person with one heart. It depends in us. It's not depends in Him. If it would depend in Him, it would take place already. He handcuffed and chained Himself to us because the story of this wide world is that we as a nation will be light to the wide world and bring complete redemption. We! And the community is one synagogue, like the, the, the Zohar Kadosh is saying. Kenishtachada, one organization, one group of people that will be united, that will be attached, that will hold hands together, like warriors, like soldiers, not separating, will bring complete redemptions. Why? 
because their circles will expand and expand and grow and grow and take over the wide world. That there will be no corner on the universe that will not be illuminated from the light of Emunah, the light of Hashem in the world. And it's in our power and you should take your part in it. You should believe that you have your part in the redemption and go and be a redeemer, not crazy Mashiach. Not seeking, oh, I'm Mashiach. We don't lack of Mashiachim. I have a list of 300 in my email box. You don't need to be Mashiach. You need to be a warrior. You need to fight for the weak. You need to support the poor. You need to help people. You need to make changes in the world. You don't need to be Mashiach. Mashiach is a spirit. Mashiach is a spirit that hovers above the water. The verses are saying, the verses are saying, "Veruach Elokim merachefet al peneamaim." The spirit of God is hovering above the water. The Zohar Kadosh is saying, "Daru Choshel Mashiach." It's the spirit of Mashiach. It's hovering above the water. Don't worry. Mashiach is here, he's hovering above the water. You don't need to be scared, you don't need to be Mashiach, you don't need to be no one, you need to be the one you are. That's what you need to be, just be who you are. Stop being terrified and scared what people will think about you. You won't fall off the derech, you won't fall off the way, you won't stop putting tefillin, you will put tefillin with joy. You won't stop keeping Shabbat. You will keep Shabbat in the way that you feel connected to Shabbat. That's what Hashem wants from you. Hashem don't need an army of penguins that are functioning, soldiers that are running, that are imitating each other. He made you unique and different that you will reveal your unique light. That's the beauty of Hashem. That He's so colorful. That he could create the world with billions of fingerprints that are different. That you don't have two fingerprints that are the same. No two portraits, two faces that are similar. Two eyeballs that are similar. Why? Because that's how he wants it to be. So be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. You got it? You don't know the song? I'll teach you. Thank you. Chazak Baruch. Yashar Koch. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.